How would you describe your ranger? Like a lion. She roars. And she growls. Not good. So I was actually having this conversation with someone the other day and uh, they're all obviously getting about 100,000 miles at least but people are paying about two, 300 quid for a second hand box now you could buy one that could fuck up in a year or two I've uh, I bollocks mine up then I put the spare one out, I've never bought one, I've just had one spare or whatever so I put the spare one in, I got six, seven months out of that and then Charlie will obviously take the part of the other truck so that went in mine and I've got six months out of this one it's now December so maybe not even six months and yeah I finished it off so gearbox switch anytime soon um, it's no bother though because you know mechanic in a can she put some fucking liquid wrench in there you know that'll sort it right out um, I'm not really a fucking believer in you know tossing a bottle of magic oil in but might as well pump a couple of pumps of uh, CV joint grease in there, just for good measure. Just a quick one, from what I've had apart before, gearboxes and the like, the bearings are not lubricated by the oil in the box. The oil lubricates gears and the chain and what have you. But um, the, the ball bearings, like at either end, uh, first motion shaft for instance, they're actually rubber sealed, um, you know, deep groove ball bearings with grease in them and then the needle rollers for the lay shaft and all that they run in the oil um, so yeah holy fuck what's going on here that might be some of the cause of the vibration fucking jesus the last couple of days I heard howling but yeah fuck me yeah, that's back right out We'll have to, uh, yeah, find a nut for that, I reckon. Tell me, she's M105. Mm, nice. Well, that'll explain a bit of the fucking wobbling around the way, because the UJs are at a wanky old angle. Hmm. It's a fucking interesting find, to be fair. I wonder what else is going on, because we've been fucking all over the show, we've been off road. Ah, I don't know. Uh, 
whisk up now quite nice. Once we get going. So obviously this gearbox ain't exactly healthy, but um, it makes me feel a bit better about giving it a hard time. <laughs> now I don't get that pulsating feeling as I pull away, because where that prop was giving me that fucking feeling like the wheels are slipping. I thought, oh fuck, she's so bad, you know. She's probably close to shit in the bed, because the gears are so worn and, you know, if the bearings are worn and the gears are dropped down, they're obviously not engaging as much. And that, when they were doing that, I was thinking, of course, she's going to be close to jamming up, you know. But um, now we've sorted that, we can perhaps lean on her a bit more. <laughs> hey, oh, we've got nothing to lose, have we? She's a bit fucked, so fix it or fuck it. If you're going to do her, do her all the way. Just wondering now whether I've, whether I've forgot it when I switched that gearbox back in the summer. Me and Charlie were switching it over in between doing Hillbilly Deluxe and we've both been drinking so more than likely we've forgot it. But that's pretty rough, that's bad. Um, so yeah, make sure you do them 17 mil nuts up on the centre bear when you uh, switch your gearbox over. I'm hoping it's just been like it a couple of days because recently the last couple of days I've felt this pulsating if you like as I pull away. So fingers crossed, you know, that was on there and it just wiggled loose and then but um yeah so for those of you that are not familiar with U joints and all that you're thinking why is it pulsating if it's just dropped down? What how's that work? The U joints are still good but the prop shaft's at a wanky old angle. And basically it comes down to like U joints and CV joints. CV joints are constant velocity, so if you input like one turn, it comes out one turn exactly as it came in, if you like. U joints, if, if you feed it like 100 RPM and it's straight, that's no bother. But once you put an angle on the U joint, you get a kind of like 100, you know, 105 RPM, something like that, 95, 105, 95, and it's always like, whooshing if you like speeding up and slowing down which is why you always got to have two working in the pair so one's no good you know so that's why you have to put a double card and, which is basically two U joints and one on the front of a discovery or a defender or what have you um, but anyway so you always need two working in like pairs so if it's 10 degrees coming off of that one down to your diff it needs 10 degrees coming back up to your diff so the angle has got to be equal now on a Ranger, you've got three joints. But ignore the first joint, because it just comes straight off the gearbox and to the centre bearing. And then from the centre bearing, you've got your two that work as a pair, obviously down and then back up again to the diff, if you like. So the angles are matched. So whatever you get in, it changes and then it changes back. So you get like a, a balance, an imbalance, and then it's balanced again. So if you go changing any of those angles by a large degree, like that was, <laughs> Um, it's all out of phase if you like, it's, you're getting like the gearbox pushing out a nice steady rotation and your, your rear diff seeing like a whole fucking wibbly wobbly crock of shit basically. So yeah, but there's more about that on YouTube, there's loads of videos of black and white discs on each U joint and the bloke changing the angle and showing you what's going on. So have a look at that because it's quite interesting. Uh, some gearboxes, like I think BMWs, they've got a Guiba at one end, which is a big rubber flex disc. Uh, and obviously the gearbox don't move too much, and the, the back of the diff is basically immovable because it's got a subframe. But the bit going into the diff has got a CV joint in it. Fancy. But the range is still pretty old school, so new joints, but if you keep them greased, and they're working in pairs, and nothing wrong with that. So, yeah, a little lesson for you. Not been too busy over Christmas, really. Just the usual presents, lots and lots of food, and feeling fat. And uh, I feel really bad because I said to my mates, like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm going for doing this. I'm going for going for a trip down Welney Wash when that's flooded. And mate who lives in Welney sent me a photo, it's at 1 meter 20. It's like, fuck. And there's a bloke out there on a jet ski and a bloke in a canoe. So it's a bit deep, really. That's like, you know, that's that's bonnet height and it's got a fair current on it. So 
I don't really fancy that. Yeah, right, we're in third now, look, it's not too bad, but then... Oh dear, we've got some wine. Three and a half grand, slap the gas. <laughs> not nice, but oh well. But yeah, jokes aside, no, we do need to change the fucking gearbox, but everyone makes out like the Rangers are like, oh, you know, they're, they're renowned for doing gearboxes and you know, if you said to me gearbox trouble on a Ranger, I'd say, oh yeah. But in all honesty, it's kind of like the people that have the gearbox trouble will then go and get a second hand gearbox with, I don't know, 150,000 on it, 120,000. So she's got like 30,000 left in her, which is what, a year and a half? Uh, and then in a year and a half later, they'll go, oh, this gearbox is fucked. And then they'll have another one and another one. And they'll be like, oh, you know, I'm only getting like, a year and a half, a year from each gearbox. But then you fit in second hand parts, you? So if yours has gone at 150 or whatever, then, uh, you know, the next one's probably going to go around that time, isn't it? You're not going to have much life left in it. So, if we rebuild it, hopefully, she'll be as good as the original one I had. Which, in all honesty, this truck, when I bought it, had a weight ticket in it for a caravan and this loaded. And it were about four and a half ton, I think. Because, what was this? This on the weight ticket were about two five. And then the caravan were one eight, I think. So, round about four and a half ton. When I got it, it had done 103,000. So, if that had been turning a caravan about and whatnot, and she was, what was she? She was about 11 years old when I got it. I don't think that's too bad. And then I've given it some fucking rare old stick. That's been up to Lake District, down at Cornwall, and then I fitted the breathers on the gearbox and the axles. So, you know, I'd say she had a hard life, but she lasted until probably 150, 160, something like that, because I switched it, what, last year, so that lasted until she was 15 years old, which I think is pretty good, you know, and then obviously I've put that one in that was, that was an 18 year old box when I put it in, <laughs> but she done six months, and then clunked out fifth gear, and then I put in a 14 year old box, that already had some noises just when you were sat there idling and now that's finished so yeah but like Charlie's gearbox he done well he must have done about 150,000 because his engine was on 158 I think when we pulled it out we switched the engine over done that and that had only been a couple months and then he started dropping third and fourth because I remember we were out and uh we switched the engine over, right? It was it was a right old fucking game. We switched the engine over, and it was like, right, you know, all good. S sealed up the snorkel, put a snorkel on it. Went forward in down Norfolk, done like 10, 11 fords. Done a wheel bearing that night, so ended up coming over on a low loader, and the wheel bearing was properly fucked. It was like you could get the wheel and wiggle it about an inch and a half. So she was done. She was she was cooked to good. Um, and we done all that and got her going and then we was only out like two or three times after that and coming home he's like well third's crunching a bit i was like you sure because yeah i said we well, you, you know if your clutch is a bit mushy that won't that won't be disengaging he goes no, no, no it's definitely all right because it's in it's all right in first and second you know and yeah it started crunching in a third and then fourth so he pulled it out and uh hey <laughs> literally just come out See uh, Mark Free pull up in the car park. Oh, Mark Free. Put me shopping in, and the bloke jumps out and goes, What size tyres you got on yours? I said, Oh, 33s. Oh, I want to put bigger ones on mine. I said, Oh, yeah. You can lift torsion bars up and that. He's like looking around, he's like, Oh, pretty smart truck, that. I said, You on the forum? He goes, Oh, yeah, I just, I just put on there about lifting it today. I was like, oh, Good lad, you know, fucking good lad. So, um, yeah, just fucking had a little chat with Joe. I don't know his second name, but Joe from Mildenall in his Mark III in Tesco's car park, as you do. 